Hi, my name is Alan Duent. Thank you for taking interest in my bicycle odometer. So this is the hardware that I've got. This is an Arduino Nano LCD screen as you can see. I've got a potentiometer here which is used to regulate the contrast on the LCD screen. And then I've got two push buttons. The one on the right is a display mode button. The one on the left is a pause resume button which I'll explain in a second. And this here is a hall sensor. And hall sensors what they do is they uh, sensor uh, magnetic fields. So if I take this little magnet here and pass it in front of the sensor, you'll see the blue light came off. And if I move it off, it, the light comes back on. So I chose to use this rather than a mechanical switch. So what I plan to do is to put this sensor on my front wheel, on well actually on the frame of the bicycle, and then I put a magnet on the front wheel such that when the wheel makes a revolution, the magnet comes in front of the sensor and the sensor picks it up. Okay, now for the buttons, as you see when the board starts, you see a press button to start message. You can press any of these two buttons and it will start recording the first period. So what I've got showing on the display here on the upper left hand corner is the distance traveled so far in kilometers. Below it the elapsed time in seconds, minutes and hours. The S is speed in kilometers per hour and the A is the average speed in kilometers per hour that's been attained for the period so far. Now if, hit the, if I hit the mode button it will change the A to an M and this, would, this is meant to show my maximum speed attained during the period. I purposefully kept it that simple because I didn't want to provide too many distractions. Cycling can be dangerous so that's the reason for keeping things simple. Now if I take the sensor or excuse me the magnet and simulate my wheel turning it will start to calculate the distance traveled so far again in kilometers so 0 0.02 kilometers it calculates my current speed my average for the period if I hit M excuse me the mode button that, that's the average I was showing the, 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 uh, the maximum of 17. Now you notice too that every time the sensor picks up a wheel revolution I am showing a little plus sign here which stays on for 250 milliseconds. This is just to show you that the device is operational and is picking up the revolutions. Now the way I'm calculating the speed is I am calculating the milliseconds that it takes for the wheel to make one revolution. So from the sensor being uh, sensing the magnet to the next time it senses a magnet. So if I you know, move across the sensor very fast, obviously that means the wheel is turning very fast. Very little time between the revolutions, which means I'm actually cycling faster. Now you'll also notice that if, I, if no revolutions occur, this st stays on, but after 10 seconds I zero it out because I'm assuming that the bicycle came to a stop. I chose 10 seconds because if you were to cycle very slowly, you know, with several seconds between revolutions, then, you know, it can register down to one kilometers per hour or so, but you see it takes a few seconds. And all this depends, of course, on the circumference of my wheel, which I measured and is, is in, you know, the very top of the code. If you look at it, you'll see it there. So obviously you need to update that to the actual circumference of your tire for that to be accurate. Right, now if I hit the pause resume button, it goes into pause mode and shows me my totals for my first period. I know it's my first period because I show one here. This is my average kilometers per hour for the period, the maximum kilometers I attain during the period, the total distance in kilometers, so 0.18, and then my, you know, the, the duration of the periods in seconds, minutes, and hours. Now if I hit the mode button again, it now shows me the totals for all my laps. I only have one lap, so the totals equals to the one lap I made. And if I keep hitting the mode button, it just cycles through the laps that I have recorded. Go back into recording mode, and now it's keeping track of this data for my second lap. If I go back to the pause mode, it will then show me that lap that I have just completed. Again, second lap. 
and if I now go to my totals it will reflect the totals for those two laps click again goes to my first lap second lap etc now if I was to record again then I would go obviously into my third lap go back to pause mode and it shows me my third lap now a little feature that is handy is if I was to let's say I had 50 laps and this is my 50th lap showing I cycle through and start looking at my first lap my second lap and then I want to see again my last lap that I did because I forgot what those that looked like rather than clicking 48 or so more times what I can do is I can very quickly click this and go back into paused mode and it shows me the last lap that I made so in other words what happens is if you get out of pause mode but come right back in it within two seconds I'm assuming you didn't want to get out of pause mode and so I'm not recording anything so those those two seconds or less are not counted as a lap I just go back and show you the last lap that you did it can record up to 99 laps and what happens from the hundredth lap onwards is that the data for the for the hundredth lap is recorded in the position for the 99th lap so I'm overriding the data in the 99th lap that's just how I chose for it to work I could have you know shifted the array so that I drop off the very first lap the day for the first lap but I didn't choose to do that because that would have taken some time processing time and I quite frankly don't think I'll ever reach 99 laps so this is more than enough for my personal needs and that's pretty much the functionality hope that was helpful to you leave me comments uh, on your feedback if you have any would greatly appreciate that and otherwise, I uh, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.